Mission Sunday. And mission is a very important part of our faith. And so this Sunday, we have the privilege to welcome uh, Pastor Boon Lee, the head of the YWAM ministry. We will hear from her about the importance of mission from the Word of God as well as to hear some testimonies or some stories of how God is using YY ministry for His glory. So come at 10 o'clock for the first service or 11.30 for the second service. I'll see you there. Hello everybody, my name is Hannah and I'm from Vietnam. I watch KKC online sometimes because of the COVID-19, the church is closed. KKC is a very nice place where children can learn and sing songs about Jesus. I learned that Jesus can do, do miracles to raise up the dead and heal the sick. Last Sunday was Easter. It's not about bunny eggs. It's about Jesus is risen from the dead on the third day. I like Kiki C so much because they have fun games and the teachers are very friendly and nice. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Kevin and I'm part of the amazing youth ministry here in CGBCU. Here at youth, we will kickstart our time with an amazing time of worship, following by a great time of games. After that, we will dedicate a short time to receive God's words and I'm personally so blessed to receive His words every week. So join us every Saturday from 4pm to 5pm at CGBC. See you there! He is a loving Father, He is our loving Father and He yearns to listen to our prayers and He yearns for His children to come to Him and ask Him for anything, especially those in accordance to His will. Now, the great thing is that uh, our relationship with God, with our Father, is so assured that we can come to Him in times of happiness, in times of joy, but also in times of our sadness, in times of disappointments, but especially in times of our brokenness. David says that a broken and contrite heart, God will not despise. He will heal and He will restore. And so, if you are broken, even by Wednesday evening itself, please come and join us and experience the power of God's magnificent presence and His healing restoration in your life as your people together with brothers and sisters come praying for you and pray together with you. So I'll see you there on Wednesday 8.30 at this magnificent worship hall. See you there. Sunday is a very special Sunday for CGBC because it is 
Mission Sunday. And mission is a very important part of our faith. And so this Sunday, we have the privilege to welcome uh, Pastor Hun Lee, the head of the YWAM ministry. We will hear from her about the importance of mission from the Word of God as well as to hear some testimonies or some stories of how God is using YWAM ministry for His glory. So come at 10 o'clock for the first service or 11.30 for the second service. I'll see you there. Hello everybody, my name is Hannah and I'm from Vietnam. I watch KKC online sometimes because of the COVID-19, the church is closed. KKC is a very nice place where children can learn and sing songs about Jesus and learn that Jesus can do, do miracles to raise up the dead and heal the sick. Last Sunday was Easter. It's not about bunny eggs. It's about Jesus is risen from the dead on the third day. I like KKC so much because they have fun games and the teachers are very friendly and nice. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Kevin and I'm part of the amazing youth ministry here in CGBCU. Here at youth, we will kickstart our time with an amazing time of worship, following by a great time of games. After that, we will dedicate a short time to receive God's words and I'm personally so blessed to receive His words every week. So join us every Saturday from 4pm to 5pm at CGBC. See you there! Hi there, thanks for tuning in. Now God says that He is a loving Father, He is our loving Father and He yearns to listen to our prayers and He yearns for His children to come to Him and ask Him for anything, especially those in accordance to His will. Now the great thing is that uh, our relationship with God, with our Father, is so assured that we can come to Him in times of happiness, in times of joy, but also in times of our sadness, in times of disappointments, but especially in times of our brokenness. David says that a broken and contrite heart, God will not despise. He will heal and He will restore. And so, if you are broken, even by Wednesday evening itself. Please come and join us and experience the power of God's magnificent presence and His healing restoration in your life as your people together with brothers and sisters come praying for you and pray together with you. So I'll see you there on Wednesday 8.30 at this magnificent worship hall. See you then. Good to see you. 
You know, this Sunday is a very special Sunday for CGBC because it is Mission Sunday. And mission is a very important part of our faith. And so this Sunday, we have the privilege to welcome uh, Pastor Boon Lee, the head of the YWAM ministry. We will hear from her about the importance of mission from the Word of God as well as to hear some testimonies or some stories of how God is using YY ministry for His glory. So come at 10 o'clock for the first service or 11.30 for the second service. I'll see you there. My name is Hannah and I'm from Vietnam. I watch KKC online sometimes. Because of the COVID-19, the church is closed. KKC is a very nice place where children can learn and sing songs about Jesus. And learn that Jesus can do, do miracles to raise up the dead and heal the sick. Last Sunday was Easter. It's not about bunny eggs. It's about Jesus is risen from the dead on the third day. I like KKC so much because they have fun games and the teachers are very friendly and nice. Hi everyone, my name is Kevin and I'm part of the amazing youth ministry here in CGBCU. Here at youth, we will kickstart our time with an amazing time of worship, following by a great time of games. After that, we will dedicate a short time to receive God's words and I'm personally so blessed to receive His words every week. So join us every Saturday from 4pm to 5pm at CGBC. See you there! Hi there! Thanks for tuning in. Now God says that He is a loving Father he is our loving Father and He yearns to listen to our prayers and He yearns for His children to come to Him and ask Him for anything, especially those in accordance to His will. Now, the great thing is that uh, our relationship with God, with our Father, is so assured that we can come to Him in times of happiness, in times of joy, but also in times of our sadness, in times of disappointment, but especially in times of our brokenness. David says that a broken and contrite heart, God will not despise. He will heal and He will restore. And so, if you are broken, even by Wednesday evening itself, please come and join us and experience the power of God's magnificent presence and His healing restoration in your life as your people together with brothers and sisters come praying for you and praying together with you. So I'll see you there on Wednesday 8.30 at this magnificent worship hall. See you there. church wherever you are we are here to come to praise the Lord hallelujah so good to see you and for those who are at home the Lord bless you come let's come and uh, worship the Lord together I want to invite you to stand make yourself comfortable getting ready to praise our God
I want to read to you just one verse before we start. Hallelujah. In Isaiah 53, it says that how beautiful on the mountains are the feet of the messenger who announced the good news. All is well. He brings good news, announces salvation, and tells Zion that Elohim rules as king. How beautiful on the mountains are the feet who bring good news. Amen. The Lord make all things beautiful in His time. Praise the Lord. Come. Let's come and worship our Lord. Let's sing unto Him. Lifting up our hands. Lifting up our voices unto Him. Hallelujah. Forgive us. 
can stand against the name of Jesus. That could not hold you The will talk before you The silence of A sin and grave The heavens are wrong you have no right, you have no right, you have no right, now and forever, God, you pray. Yours is the kingdom, yours is the glory, yours is the name. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. Jesus. Our King. What a powerful name it is. Nothing can stand against. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus, what a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. I will bring praise, no weapon form against me shall remain. I will rejoice, I will declare, God is my victory.
Let us give Jesus, the Lord our God, a blessing and offering of thanksgiving, of clap offering. <laughs> Hallelujah. All praise and glory to Him. And please show your appreciation to our worship team today for reminding us of that wonderful truth that the powerful name of Jesus reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you all for coming and thank you if you are joining us online through our YouTube channel. Uh, we want to uh, give you a gentle reminder for all of you who are here to please, please uh, continue to follow our SOP. That means to follow the directions of the ushers, right? As they, especially as uh, where they direct you to sit, please obey their instructions because we want to ensure your safety and the peace of mind when we come to the house of God to worship Him. So we don't need to uh, be bothered by anything else, right? So, um, yeah, we will appreciate if all of you would kindly do that. Thank you. And um, today is a special Sunday because it's Mission Sunday. So when you walk in, you should have received uh, two envelopes. One is the general uh, tithes and offering. Another one is for Mission uh, with a mission envelope attached to it, right? So that, for this Sunday, all your offerings to that uh, mission envelope will be given to the YWAM ministry. So uh, as you put your offerings into bo both envelopes, you can just insert it at the offering box later as you walk out, and your job is done, all right? So thank you. And uh, yeah, uh, before I introduce to you our special uh, team, our special uh, uh, preaching team this morning, uh, let us come to the Lord in prayer. Father God, indeed, we want to give you thanks for all you have done in our lives, for all of your goodness and your mercy and your grace that flows out just from who you are. We, as your people, we are gathered here this morning. We are so enthralled in your grace, and we are so filled with thankfulness each and every day. We want to be reminded 
of who you are and for what you have done in our lives. We ask that, especially at this time, when we gather together, open our eyes and our ears and our hearts to listen to your word, to listen to what you have put in the heart and mind of your servants, the YWAM ministry. Lord, direct them, teach them what to say, teach them your truth so that when they speak, you will use those words and teach, us, teach it to your people this morning. So Lord, indeed, we want to uh, continue to ask for you to do that and we want to ask this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen, amen. So our special team this morning is from Youth with a Mission. Uh, the head of the ministry is Pastor Vun Lee. She is no stranger to us as she has been speaking to us plenty of times. So um, right now, without any further ado, let us welcome Pastor Vun Lee. Good morning. It's a joy to be here this morning again. And I just want to say thank you to everyone who was, um, <clears throat> who's been with us and in prayer, standing together with us in this season uh, uh, through missions, through the things that God has called us to engage with Him. And um, I just want to thank the, 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 the church and the leadership for standing together with us, believing in the work that God has given us to do. And the work that God has given us is also your work. Amen? And the harvest that we are going to see is also your harvest. Amen? And so I'm excited this morning to come here to share with you some of the things that God has been doing through us uh, through this season of MCO and to show you some pictures and some hot news, just really off of uh, hot news, Gabriel is coming to share with you. Thank you. Hello. My name is uh, Gabriel from Johor. I'm an Indonesian Chinese from Johor. And growing up as a, in a Christian family, I, I struggle with loneliness and uh, longing to be loved. So I try to fill it up with pornography and games. But still, when I do it, it does not fill me up. Uh, and you know, God was still faithful. And through the discipleship training school in YWAM Ipo, he encountered me and of his father love for me. And that really transformed me as a person because his father love for me, like, changed me. So, after that, since then, I've been serving in YWAM Ipo full-time. In YWAM Ipo, as you can see, these are my friends and my uh, colleagues. Our vision and desire is to mobilize and disciple young people for mission and for God and to start new things. Start new things. That's why in YWAM Ipo, we run training school, evangelism, and mercy ministry. Under mercy ministry, during the MCO, we st instead of being stuck in our houses, we started to seek God for what His heart is and what He wants to do in, in and His heart. So, we started with vegetable distribution and from vegetable distribution to the poor and needy family and the refugee family that were affected during MCO. From there, God began to take us out on the street to look out for the poor and needy and that is how Makanla started. So, every week, we will cook food and we, will, and we have some partners uh, with other churches uh, to, to distribute food to the poor and needy right now. And right now, we are distributing food in Wallacott every week. As you can see in the picture, uh, this is what we do every week. UPG, Unreached People Group, next in our ministry. Do you know that there is 16 Unreached Orang Asli Group in Malaysia? And out of the 16 Unreached People Group, we are, work out, we are working with the people group of Jahai and Kansiu. Hot of the press, two days ago, our team just left to one of the kampongs to hold revival meeting. And um, they are reaching out to the villages. 
And right now, as we, I am speaking, they are right now holding the revival meeting in the villages. Why do we do this? Because we, as the body of Christ, has failed to reach out to the 16 unreached Orang Asli group. It is, if we do not respond to, this, uh, to the call of God to this people group, it is expected and is targeted by other religious groups that by 2030, all Orang Asli in East Coast of Semenanjung will be wiped out. Do you see how serious this is? What are we going to do about this? What, as we as the body of Christ, need to do about this? We have to do something because we are called here to do something in this world, not to let, it, not let the evil overcome us and let the light shine. Amen? Next, in our ministry, Life School, a school for refugee kids. We have moved into a new building and God is giving us the opportunity to plant seeds in these young people and, and young kids, even though they are from another religion and mostly are not Christians. Right now, Life School is in need of more volunteer teachers in maths, science, and English and its primary level. If you are interested... Please contact this number And if you know anyone who is interested Please contact this number Our training school Discipleship training school Will be running September this year 20th And in this school Five months You will get uh, to discover your purpose in God And what God wants you to do in your life This, this will be this, You will have the opportunity to know God And make God known Next in our school we also have the Discipleship Bible School, which is in three months, you will get to learn the whole Bible in three months as God's redemptive plan in the Bible. So, connect with us through our website, Instagram, and Facebook page, and email if you want to know about what YWAM Ipo is doing. Lastly, come and volunteer, either for a week or for a month, to taste, uh, uh, to taste mission and what God is doing in Ipo. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Paula Chong, and some of you have met me um, in China, actually, because my husband and I used to live there many years, and some of you have met me here when we've come for visits. But we're now living in Ipoh, and very excited to share with you today. I've been serving in Youth with a Mission for 28 years now. I had to do the math last night, and I just want to testify how God is faithful. He has really provided for, for me to stay in missions for this long. I didn't think I would be able to. I didn't do this on my own. It's God that provided. And I just want to testify to you how faithful that our God is, step by step, every day, every way. And he does even more than what we can think or imagine by his power and for his glory. Like it says in Ephesians 3.20, this is so true. And I'm standing here today just because of him, not of my own strength. Uh, because, like I said, some of you know me, and I don't do things on my own strength. I don't have strength, but I'm doing this on his strength. So I just want to praise God for that. I can't explain how um, everything that God does, but he does it. And this is his miracle, and I just um, want to give him praise and glory. So Youth with a Mission is for all ages. As you can see, I'm not youth, but I joined at 29 years old. So don't do the math on how, how old I am, but, but realize it's, it's for you. Missions is for everyone. God commanded all of us to go. And in Youth with the Mission, we join together in teams. We work together to go to all the nations. And our entry level is the Discipleship Training School, which is wonderful to be able to know God and to learn how to make him known as he calls in all the unique giftings that God has given everyone. I just want to uh, give glory to God that we are able to come and work together with him. You know, it, it's with God. It's always about God, not about me and what I can do or can't do. So God works together all denominations, all nationalities, to share God's love and God's message to the world. And that's why we ask you, like, join us or participate in missions, to join, because this is his great adventure. 
And I do know how much missions you've, your church has done over the years because you've come to China to visit us. So I'm really grateful for it. So I just want to say thank you so much for all your years of praying, of giving, and of serving God. And I just want to encourage you to continue to following God's call in your life. Thanks again. We see another young lady sitting there. Her name is Faith. She will be sharing a little bit in the second service. Uh, today is a super Sunday for all of us in YWAM. We have been split up in many, many directions this week because of the exploding things that God is doing uh, <clears throat> in this time. You know, during the MCO, <clears throat> it was a time of preparation for us because we were, well, in a sense, stuck in our homes. But God said, prepare because the harvest is coming. Amen. And I want to tell you that our harvest is here already. The harvest is here already. This morning, I want to talk about getting out of your comfort zone. I want to talk about getting out of our comfort zone. So, <clears throat> what is our comfort zone? What is a comfort zone? A comfort zone is a, is a physical or a psychological, usually psychological, or even an emotional state in which things feel very familiar to you. And you are at ease, and you are in control of your environment. You experience very low levels of anxiety and stress. Things are easy to do. You can almost close your eyes, and it's, uh, you know, pilot mode. There is very little effort, little or no effort is needed to do what you need to do. And there's no mental resistance. That is our comfort zone. So it could be your home, it could be your job, it could be something you like to eat, it could be, you know, your entertainment. Um, <clears throat> what does this have to do with missions? I want to say something about comfort zone. All comfort zone wants to do, all comfort zone is concerned about is to keep you inside it. Is to keep you inside your own comfort zone. So they, that's the voice of the comfort zone. That's all it wants to do, to keep you, in a sense, a prisoner inside. And when you are in that comfort zone, you don't want to go anywhere. You just want to be in the comfort zone. <laughs> what has it got to do with missions? Because missions is about getting out of your comfort zone. The word go is not, it's, it's, it's an active word, get out. When God said to us during the MCO, there are people out there with needs that I want to meet through you. When we're thinking, huh? How do we get out? Who are these people? What can we do? But God showed us what to do, like you saw in our Makanla thing. And we met lots of people who were desperate. So, missions is getting out. It's as simple as getting out. The comfort zone will tell you, don't get out. It's dangerous out there. Comfort zone tells you, you're stupid to get out. Think about Abraham. God called Abraham out of his country. Get out of your nation, Abraham, and to this land that I will give you and your descendants. If Abraham would have said no, <laughs> there would be no Jewish nation today. Think about Moses. Moses, get out. Go to Pharaoh. You're too comfortable 40 years with your, your sheep and, and your father-in-law. You know, it, yeah, it's in the backside of the desert, but you're so comfortable now. 40 years, get out. Go back to where you came from. Go back to Pharaoh and tell him to let my people go. What 
And Moses pulled up a whole lot of excuses. The last one being, I don't know what to say, God. I'm sure we've said that to God many times. I don't know what to say, God. Imagine if Moses said no to God, there would be no law today. We would have no law, the word of God. What about Joseph? So comfortable in his own home, loved by his father, pampered. He, whatever he wanted, he, he had it. His father spent his life giving a comfort, com- building comfort zone around him because he was the one beloved son that belonged to his beloved wife. And you know, some of us parents, we spend a lot of time and money building comfort zones around our children. And then we wonder why they won't get out. <laughs> and so, Joseph, you know, God had to get him out of his father's house. Because imagine if he had not, there would have been no Hebrew who would be a savior to those Egyptians and even to the nation of he- the, 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 the people of Hebrew at that time. They would have perished. Think of the little slave girl in 2 Kings. The Syrians went and, 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 and raided and, and what they were a constant war with, the, with, with, um, uh, with Israel. And they, they raided and they took this little slave girl. She lost her family. She would never see her family again and she became a slave. She lost her freedom. She lost everything that was familiar to her. She was taken to a new nation. She, she should have hated her master. She should have hated these people. But she went and served Naaman. You know the story of Naaman. And she served Naaman and she realized the master is a um, leper. And she said, in her, out of her comfort zone, she said this, if only my master would go to Jerusalem and to Israel. For there's a prophet there and he will be healed. That's all she said. And that started And that started the events, that triggered the events that opened doors for Naaman and a nation that will come to Jesus. So Jesus, what about Jesus? Supreme example. He stepped out of heaven. Fantastic. Who wants to leave heaven? You go to heaven, you don't want to come back. Jesus was in heaven, but he stepped out of heaven. He stepped out of his comfort zone. He stepped out of of his divinity and stepped into humanity. He came to seek the lost, the last, to seek, the, to, save, to seek and save the lost, and the lost and nailed him. It sounds, maybe the question in your mind is, if the comfort zone is so, uh, getting out of our comfort zone is so bad, why would God want us to leave the comfort zone? But let me tell you, the rewards are great. The rewards are heavenly. The rewards far surpass what you would ever earn for yourself on earth. The fulfillment far surpass what you could do for yourself for your whole life. Comfort zone stops us from obeying God, people. It can imprison you. Why would God want, does God want us of comfort? Yes, He does. He's a God of comfort. Amen? He's a God of supreme comfort. There's no one who can comfort like our God. In fact, the Holy Spirit is called the capital C comforter. But so often we find comfort in everything except in the arms of our Lord Jesus Christ, except in the Holy Spirit. We don't know what it is sometimes, many times to be comforted by the Holy Spirit. We're so afraid to let go of our comfort zone and enter into what it is to be to the comforter. Oh, come and taste and see that the Lord is good. That the comfort that the Lord gives you is far more deeper, lasting and richer than any comfort that the world can give to you. You heard, um, what's his name's story? Gabe's story. He found comfort in games. He found comfort in porn. He found comfort in all these things because he was hungry for love. And that's what 
We are do. That's what we do to ourselves when we are hungry inside, when our love tank is, is empty, when our love tank is low. We look for comfort. We look for comfort everywhere. We look for comfort in the physical, in the emotional, in relationships, in food, in everything. But these things can stop us from obeying God. Because when we, find, when we fall into the arms of these false comforts, they will speak lies to us. They will say, you are in the right place. Don't give it up. There's nowhere better than this. Feel how good it is. So the comfort zone, <clears throat> these comfort zones can actually lie to us and, and, and blind us from seeing what God wants us to see. Another thing is the comfort zone. Our comfort zone can cheat us of our destiny. Can you imagine if Abraham, Moses, Joseph, and the little girl and Jesus, they'd say no to God and stay in that comfort zone. They would have never reached their destiny. They would never have reaped the harvest. They would never, never see the release of blessing. They would never be partnering. They would see the miracles that God and who God is. They would have never entered into that destiny that God has prepared for them even before the foundation of the world. And you know, sadly, you know, this is what God wants. The, the Bible tells us that even before the foundation of the world, before you were born, before you were ever in existence, God has prepared good works for us to walk in. But sadly, sometimes we never walk into those good works because we never leave our comfort zone. We never discover what those good works are, what those wonderful promises feel like, what it is. We never taste and see. We never get filled with the promises of God, the reality of who God is because we don't step out. And we get cheated out of our destiny. And I, I, we, have many, we have a few Oran Asli who serve with us. Right now, there's a team that's in the village even doing revival meetings right now. I'm, I'm so excited about them. I'm supposed to be there, but I say, I'm sorry, you guys go, and it's good that I'm not there. One of the young, peop one of the young lady, Asna, an Orang Asli girl, she came to us when she was 19 years old, and she finished her details, went back to her kampong, and she felt, you know, she prayed, and God said, go out again. Go leave your kampong. Get out. Go to Ipo and serve me there. And she struggled. She struggled for months because she comes from a family where there was nobody who believed in Jesus. She's the only one. She struggled. And when she finally said, yes, God, I will, her family tried to stop her and did everything to stop her, but she pushed hard to come. And she came and they said, okay, we'll support you. They gave her some financial support every month. They said they would give her some financial support every month. Because thinking, this is what Asna said, thinking that if they were to support her and she get her heart's desire for a little while, then she would get enough of it and come back. She comes back. She comes out of Ipo. After one week of being in Ipo, the phone calls are coming. Asna, Bali, Kampong! The voices of come back, come back, come back. Come back to your comfort zone. Come back. And she said, it was so hard. I wanted to go back. Everything in me was crying out. I'm on Balik Kampong. This is so unfamiliar to me, this Ipo place, you know. But she said, no, she pressed through. And when she said, no, I am not going home. I'm staying here to serve God. I'm staying here because I have a call on my life. <laughs> when she said that and her family realized she's serious about it, they cut off all support. But I want to tell you, two years down the line, her mother has come to the Lord. And she's going to see every member of her family coming to the Lord one by one. Amen? And last, the last trip we went to the north, this girl has become so prophetic. She got up on the pulpit. And she said to me, Mom, I have a word for the church, she says. I have a word. And she got up there, took the microphone, and delivered the word of prophecy to the church. And tears streaming down her cheeks. I cried when I heard that word. Because it was spot on for the church. This morning, she texts. She said, I'm leading worship, but you know what? I lost my voice. I'm losing my voice. She said, I know, it's the devil. It is the devil trying to stop me. It's spiritual warfare. Please pray with me. I say, Asna, don't listen to the lies. Get up there and sing your heart out. 
Because the devil is trying to rob you of your destiny. I'm going to tell you, you know, the devil is going to try and rob you. He's going to put everything in, the, in your way to stop you from entering into God's purposes for your life. But these are the things we must stand firm. These are the things that we must have a breakthrough. God wants to give you a breakthrough because every breakthrough you have, you develop muscles of faith. You develop eyes for God. You develop a love for God. You develop, you develop a bigger heart to receive God's heart. When your life is full of your comfort zone, there's no place for God's kingdom. There's very little place for what He has to say to you because you're so worried that your, your, your comfort zone will be taken away. You spend all our time and energy rebuilding what we've lost. I have another, we have another girl, Kimi. She's from Sabah. Young girl again, she came. She, she did a DTS in Sabah and when she went back home, and she prayed and the Lord said, come, leave and go to Ipoh. Her whole family said, no, you will not, because Kimi had lost her father when she was young. And she's one in the family, only one of the girls in the family, and her mother said, no, you are not leaving. Her uncles, everybody rose up and said, no, you are not leaving. You are not going out to be a missionary. And she got a scholarship from one of the church schools to go and continue her studies after her Form 5. The scholarship was available for her. She went into a time of prayer and fasting and cried out to the Lord. She waited, she waited, she waited. And the Holy Spirit spoke to the mother one day, release your daughter to me. Release her. And the mother went to her crying, forgive me, I'm going to release you. I'm going to step up in faith and release you. And that's how she's with us. They are still fighting to remain in the fray, to remain in the victory of the Lord Jesus Christ. And every time they make a step, they make a step of commitment, victory comes. Amen? Pay attention. What comfort zones are you in today? When we got out to the street, we found, we heard many, many stories. We heard so many stories. I can give you some examples. You saw some pictures that we, we uh, some, some pictures just now. You know, we've been going to, giving, to give our food. Is it because we just want to meet their physical needs? Yes, we do. We want to meet their physical needs. You, because you see Jesus meeting physical needs. When, when people's felt needs are met, their spirit opens up. Their eyes are open. Their doors begin to open. And that's what we want to do. We want to meet their physical needs. We want to meet some of the needs so that they will see that they have a greater need of a saviour. They have a greater need to be forgiven of their sins. So, we found out that there were, you know, whenever we go out and, and give out food, it would go very quickly, but we found out that there were many who couldn't even come down, come out and get food because they couldn't walk. And so we started going to their homes to deliver the food because was, they, they, they couldn't walk. And so that was our open door. We went in, you know, we were able to say hi to them and get to know them. And so pray with us. If you have time, come with us. Come with us to talk to some of these people. Yes, I'm going to tell you, it's hot, it's not clean, but I'm going to tell you, the joy will far outweigh what you, <laughs> what discomfort you think there will be. Many of them lost their jobs because, because the coffee shops and restaurants closed down and there are no more jobs and so they have no way how, how they're going to eat. They, they ask you for what, not just one pack of food, they ask you for two packs because they want to keep it for their dinner. They live in terrible condition because there's lots of drug addicts, there's no light at all. Every light, everything that can be stripped off and sold is taken away. And it's sold by the drug addicts. And by 6 or 7 o'clock, they lock themselves in the home because it's dangerous to be out there in that area. We met an old man. Our team met an old man. We heard the story. I mean, we met, we met this lady, but this old man fell on the staircase, an old man, and he died. He died from the fall. And when his son found out that his father died, he died at the same time out of grief and shock. So in the one day, this son, and of course his older son, I mean, his it's it's grown-up son, married, his wife lost his, her husband and her father-in-law in the same day. And we missed speaking to these two men. We lost them. 
And when we met this woman again, she was still crying. She was still, her eyes were still red. She couldn't eat because of the grief that she went. The shock and the grief of losing her husband and father-in-law. The needs are, are desperate out there. We, we also met a lot of ex-Christian people who say, I'm a Christian but never go to church anymore for whatever reason. So, don't let com the comfort, if you don't deal with your comfort zone, if you're not able let, to let go of your comfort zone, it's going to stop you from moving out. You're going to say, it's too hot, it's too this, it's too that, it's too, all your excuses will line up and you are defeated before you even start. So church, let it go. <laughs> let go of your comfort zone because what you're going to gain instead of your comfort zone is far greater. You never earn it. It's from the Lord. Number two, when you step out of your comfort zone, you, you are going to begin to see incredible open doors you never imagined. It's going to come from, it's miraculous open doors the moment you step out. You know, in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, things, are, things that no eye has seen, ear or, the, or ear heard, or mind imagined, the things that God has prepared for those who love Him. Meaning, this verse God is saying, you have not seen it. You have not heard it. You've never imagined it. You could never imagine it. It's new. I haven't even created it. But when the moment you get out, I'm going to create it. You're going to see it. You're going to hear it. It's going to enter your mind. You're going to see visions. You're going to see those things. You never imagine in your lifetime you will ever see it. Because I have prepared them afresh for you. Because you love me and because you wait for me. And this is what we see. So during the MCO, God spoke to us as a team and said, get ready. Don't just sit there and do nothing. Get ready. You know about the fruit of the Holy Spirit, but I want you to walk in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Do you know about the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit? Some say yes, some say no. So let's study and let's get going into the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. We gave ourselves to practicing the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. We got, are you baptized in the Holy Spirit? Do you speak in tongues? I ask my staff. Some yes, some no. Let's do it. It took us many weeks to get fluent in tongues. Then after that, we went on to interpretation of tongues. Ha ha. Getting interpretation of your tongues. And then after that, it took us a few weeks to get fluent in it. And then it was prophecy. Oh, that was a little bit easier. But prophecy, prophesying to one another, listening to the voice of God, listening to the voice of God. And then we went on to the gift of faith. Wow. Why do we need the gift of faith? And so God was teaching us, we, we taught, and I said to God, God, I don't have, you know, I believe in all the nine gifts, I want to walk in all the nine gifts whenever there is a, a need for me to walk in, but I felt I'm not, you know, qualified to teach all nine gifts, and the Holy Spirit said, teach it, teach it because I'm going to do it, I'm going to show you. You know, there are many things in the Word of God, people, that we have not dared to step into, because we feel disqualified, we feel it's not for me, this is a lie from the devil. And the Lord spoke to us, do it because the days are coming when your young people, when your missionaries are going to go into these kampongs, the bombers are going to send evil spirits to them. What are they going to do? <laughs> They're going to raise the dead. How are they going to do it? They have to walk on water. How are they going to do it if they don't practice it? <laughs> How will you stand? How will you see miracles happen if you don't practice and you don't expect it in your ordinary life? God has called us out of the ordinary into the supernatural. How much of the supernatural are you living in? Live in the supernatural, church. Because you are the sons and daughters of God. And in you lives the Holy Spirit, who is the Spirit of God, who renews you daily, renews your mind daily. Walk with Him. We found that evangelism cannot be done as an event. It cannot just because I, yes, we need to go and tell people our stories and the stories of Jesus. But when you do power evangelism, when you allow the Holy Spirit to teach you where to go and who to speak to and what to say, wow, you see miracles happen. 
I got into the bank the other day in a hurry to come out. And I came out and this young lady said to me, would you like to buy something in Cantonese? I walked out, no thank you. I walked down the street and the Holy Spirit said to me, go back there and talk to her. So I went back. I asked her, what are you doing? She said, I'm selling things. Are you studying? She said, I just finished my Form 5. I need to help my family. What are you selling? So I got into a conversation with her. I bought, do I need it? I don't need it. But that was my door to talk to her. And I encouraged her. I talked to her, told her, her hope, where her hope lies. I don't know if I'll see her again. I hope I will. I was in the market the other day, going to my, doing my, I mean, doing my, my normal marketing. My, 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 I was going to the vegetable stall and I, my mom was sitting just down a, a few stalls eating her, break, her breakfast. And I'm, I'm standing there buying my vegetables and I'm listening to this conversation with this really, really old lady with a tonka. And she's shouting very loudly to the vegetable seller because she's hard of hearing. And she's, she, I could see she's fumbling, and so I'm standing and watching her, and I'm going, she looks so familiar, but I don't know where I have seen her before. I'm sure I've seen her watching her, and then I got into the conversation because the vegetable seller didn't understand what she was saying, and I'm trying to, to shout back the, the, the instructions to her. And before long, two minutes down the line, my mother came, and she's shouting at her, and I'm going like, what's going on? Then my mother said, she's my colleague. We used to teach in the same school. And so they started a shouting match and everybody could hear. This is Saturday morning, everybody's in the market and they're going like, how are you? And she's like, I'm not well. And it is this 10 minute shouting match. And in 10 minutes, this old lady was telling about her whole life, how she's so angry and upset and she's all alone and nobody cares for her and everybody's cheating, of her, cheating her of her money and blah, 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 blah. And I'm going, and she says, I'm going to die soon. She said, when she said, I'm going to die soon, I looked at her and I said, I'm going like, why is she saying that? So I say, why are you saying that? <laughs> she says, um, I, I, have a, I have many things in my heart. I have to let go. And when I let go of these things, I'm going to die, she says. <laughs> and I say, God, I need to hurry up with this one. I need an open door with her. I need to know where she lives, and I need to know if I can visit her. And so I got into the shouting match. Finally, I say, I'm taking you home. So we took her home. So I found out where she lives. And I told her, Auntie, I'm a Christian. I want to come back and talk to you about Jesus. Is it okay? She said, yes, it's okay. <laughs> I want to tell you, open doors will open for you. If you will step out of your comfort zone. I want to end today by saying, I want to challenge you. What are your comfort zones that are stopping you from going out to share your love with others? From sharing your talents with others? Sharing your food? Sharing your, your time with others? Don't just go along life blindly. You want to be effective for Jesus. You want, to, you want to partner with Him. Get out of your comfort zone and see open doors and incredible miracles happening for you. Amen? Can I just pray with you? Let's pray. Thank you, Father. I just felt that today when I was worshipping here, there's somebody in here who, has, who is very concerned about your son or your daughter. You are very, very concerned. And I, I, I just want to say to you, the Lord's eye is upon you. And if you have time afterwards, I would like to pray for you. There's another person here I sense. Uh, you've, been, you've been struggling with sleepless night and you, are, you have financial situation that, that and you, you're trying to balance things and, God's, and you, have, you are worried. You are very worried. And you are like holding on to la la la. Uh, la last strings, yeah, you know what I'm saying. And God says, "Let go. I'm let go and trust me. Let go and trust me." So, um, if you have time, I would like to pray for you afterwards, also. Yeah. So, Lord Jesus, I just want to speak this word of encouragement to this church. I want to pray, Father, for comfort zones to be recognized and identified. And that, Lord, we say to you, we are willing to lay down our comfort zones and step out and walk on the water with you, Lord Jesus. We long to walk on the water, Lord Jesus, with you, like Peter. Take us by your hand. We say, yes, we want to walk by faith. We want to see you, Lord Jesus, and do those miracles in our lives, Father. And we ask God, we ask, Lord Jesus, that harvest will come, open doors, Open doors and miracles will happen even as we step out of our comfort zone. I pray and ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.
Thank you, Pastor Bundi, for sending a word of conviction and urgency to all of us. And uh, if you're a first-time visitor here, uh, I would like to welcome you and hope you are being challenged and filled with motivation to go out and serve the Lord. So we have now come to the end of service, and uh, let me just give you the benediction. So therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm, let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labour in the Lord is not in vain. Thank you for coming and hope you are energised and filled with the passion to serve the Lord ever more than ever. The service has now ended, so please uh, follow the instructions of the ushers as you make your way out of the church. Thank you very much. Have a good week. God bless. Good to see you. You know, this Sunday is a very special Sunday for CGBC because it is Mission Sunday. And mission is a very important part of our faith. And so this Sunday, we have the privilege to welcome uh, Pastor Hun Lee, the head of the YWAM ministry. We will hear from her about the importance of mission from the Word of God as well as to hear some testimonies or some stories of how God is using YY ministry for His glory. So come at 10 o'clock for the first service or 11.30 for the second service. I'll see you there. Hello everybody, my name is Hannah and I'm from Vietnam. I watch KKC online sometimes because of the COVID-19, the church is closed. KKC is a very nice place where children can le learn and sing songs about Jesus. I learned that Jesus can do, do miracles to raise up the dead and heal the sick. Last Sunday was Easter. It's not about bunny eggs. It's about Jesus is risen from the dead on the third day. I like KKC so much because they have fun games and the teachers are very friendly and nice. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Kevin and I'm part of the amazing youth ministry here in CGBCU. Here at Youth, we will kickstart our time with an amazing time of worship, following by a great time of games. After that, we will dedicate a short time to receive God's words and I'm personally so blessed to receive His words every week. So join us every Saturday from 4pm to 5pm at CGBC. See you there! says that He is a loving Father, He is our loving Father, and He yearns to listen to our prayers, and He yearns for His children to come to Him and ask Him for anything, especially those in accordance to His will. Now, the great thing is that uh, our relationship with God, with our Father, is so assured that we can come to Him in times of happiness, in times of joy, but also in times of our sadness, in times of disappointment, but especially in times of our brokenness. David says that a broken and contrite heart, God will not despise. He will heal and He will restore. And so, if you are broken, even by Wednesday evening itself, please come and join us and experience the power of God's magnificent presence and His healing restoration in your life as your people, together with brothers and sisters, 
come praying for you and praying together with you. So I'll see you there on Wednesday, 8.30 at this magnificent worship hall. See you there. Sunday for CGBC because it is Mission Sunday and mission is a very important part of our faith and so this Sunday we have the privilege to welcome uh, Pastor Boon Lee, the head of the YWAM ministry. We will hear from her about the importance of mission from the Word of God as well as to hear some testimonies or some stories of how God is using YY ministry for His glory. So come at 10 o'clock for the first service or 11.30 for the second service. I'll see you there. Hello everybody, my name is Hannah and I'm from Vietnam. I watch KKC online sometimes because of the COVID-19, the church is closed. KKC is a very nice place where children can learn and sing songs about.